warm welcome to Joburg today. I'm Danica Lilliland. Johannesburg is the largest city in the world that is not located near to a major water source. As a result, we have to take care of this precious resource. One of the ways water is wasted is through alien invasive plant species. Alien invasive species are a very big problem in the city of Johannesburg. And because we are the largest man-made forest, they consume a lot of our water. We're here at the Wits and Sectory to find out more. Invasive means that they are able to move around the country on their own. And that means that they've escaped from cultivation and they move into natural habitats and they transform those habitats. Basically humans that have moved plants around the world for the last 300 years, when commerce exploded, that's when our alien problem exploded. Nationwide, we're interested in their consumption of water. And the figures vary, but we've calculated that they use between seven to 4% of the mean annual runoff. And that's why it's valuable for us to control them. The government has got a spectacular program in operation. It's called Working for Water. And it's something that we as all South Africans should be really, really proud of. They spend over two billion rand a year taking out alien weeds. What we're doing here is we're trying to introduce biological control agents, which won't eradicate the plants, but they will suppress the population to a manageable level. And we will introduce them wherever we can to try and suppress aliens in the city. Now, jacaranda is a very nice example because that's actually a category three um, species, which means that you can grow it, but you shouldn't propagate it, and you shouldn't grow it within 30 meters of a drainage line. But on the other hand, there's a plant like lantana that many people have in their gardens because it flowers beautifully, it attracts insects, which, and then it attracts birds with its fruit. But it is without doubt the worst terrestrial weed of the subtropics. And the way you can get involved is go onto those sites and look and see what is in my garden and what am I harboring as a pest and what can I do about it. And there's a website called invasives.org.sa and they will list everything. It goes from fish to birds to plants. So this plant here is uh, a solanum. It's called bugweed. This one unfortunately has found its way here probably because the flowers, and these are still buds at the moment, but has very pretty little purple flowers. Um, and it's quite an interesting plant. It has these furry leaves as well. This is an incredibly common weed along the roadsides of um, Johannesburg. If it's in your garden, again, you've got to tear it out. It's a category one weed. Um, and it has two biocontrol agents on it. The lace bugs that we looked at in the laboratory uh, is uh, one of the agents. And the other is uh, there's a tiny little weevil that attacks the flowers. And again, if, if you can't rip it out, look for the agents and spread them around. And in fact, that would be a key issue. If we could get the general public to spread agents, that would help our job enormously. I'm Spio Matabula for Joyville Today. My name is Tony Bed, and you're watching Joburg Today. Join the conversation with us on Facebook, joburgtoday.tv, and follow us on Twitter, at Joburg Today. If you're one of those people who's constantly on the move, then catch up with us on pockettv.mobi. That's pocket with an I. With water being a scarce resource in South Africa, it's pretty important to keep it clean. Rand water turns natural surface water into safe potable water en masse. To do this, it has a water quality monitoring program based on strict standards. In South Africa, we use a standard called the South African National Standard 241, which is what we call the SAN Standard 241, and that measures water quality against about 57 determinants. All those determinants are tested in a laboratory. Rand Water Analytical Services is the laboratory site for Rand Water. It basically houses the laboratory that does the water quality testing. Now, very importantly, the SAN standard is actually benchmarked against the World Health Organization standard, and this is why we can say that we comply with international standards when it comes to water quality. Based in Vereniging, Rand Water Analytical Services tests samples from as far away as Harry Smith in the Free State and Rustenburg in North West. Water is tested on a regular basis, on a daily basis, especially in the case of indicator pathogens, seven days a week. We provide approximately a million data sets per year in terms of water quality. So that is very rigorous testing in terms of supporting water quality. Analytical services employs state-of-the-art technology in their work. 
we use the best technologies available, both in the chemistry laboratory as well as in the biology laboratory. All of the technologies we use are amongst the latest and provides the lowest detection that we can possibly achieve in the laboratory. Biological contamination refers to the levels of bacteria and chemical contamination to levels of harmful chemicals impacting on human health. Work being done at Randwater Analytical Services compares favorably to that being done by reputed uh, institutions across the world. Not only do we benchmark our standards nationally, we also benchmark our standards globally. So the water is tested not just to the SANSO241 standard, which is a national standard, but we also benchmark to EPA standards, US standards, Australian standards, as well as the World Health Organization standards. I think the, the track record of RAND water uh, in excess of 110 years speaks for itself. We've had no major water quality incidents. Uh, one of the major contributors of uh, water concern, especially on the continent, is that of cholera. Uh, we've had no such incidents, simply because the, the program is very rigorous and ensures that the water is of both safe and healthy quality when it is delivered to the consumer. Now if one thing is clear, at Rand Water Analytical Services, water is well, not just water. Marisa de Klerk, Joburg Today. How's it? I'm Alan and you're watching Joburg Today. A common but often overlooked use for water is cooling. One of the world's oldest art forms relies on this quite heavily. The Crucible Art Center gives Joburg's artists the space to create and display their works while focusing on glass art. Crucible Art Center is basically a place where people can come look at, appreciate or do art of any form. Uh, we concentrate predominantly on glass though. Uh, any form of working with hot glass. I don't think there's a very strong culture for glass in South Africa, specifically glass blowing. Uh, that's one of the reasons, believe it or not, why we concentrate on the glass blowing at the Crucible, because we do offer an opportunity for people to come and experience glass blowing. There's one tertiary institution that does give glass blowing as part of their fine arts degree. You can major in glass blowing. When the students leave there, there is actually nowhere for them to come and, or go and blow. There are a limited number of hot shops in the country as well. I think at last count there are about five hot shops. And I do believe we might be the only one that allows public access. And glass students can come and work here. They can use the equipment. There are two of us most of the time. So Ryan and myself do most of the blowing here, but neither of us work here, it's an art centre. We produce art here. There are lessons offered here. We began by offering a beginner's course and an intermediary course, an advanced course. But everybody's propensity for glass blowing differs. Historically, it's one of the earliest art forms um, that appeared. Uh, the culture in South Africa, unfortunately, isn't very strong for glass blowing. Nothing like Europe and so on. So the more we can spread that culture and people realize the rich history in the creating of glass and using molten glass, the better it will be. Hi, I'm Frontier van Kook from Van Kook Cartel and you're watching Joburg Today. For more, check out our playlists as well as business destination Joburg. That's it for me, Danica. I'll leave you with Jesse Clegg, Clarity. Back in ETV.